are in our third week and so we are in our third angel's message and if you read it me briefly it says and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man does what worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. A very serious warning indeed. And we said last night that if the Lord is issuing such a serious warning concerning worshipping this beast and his image, we had to, God had to first identify this beast for us and we saw that that beast indeed was the papacy. Tonight, we are going to look at the image and the mark. These must be identified for us so that we, of all necessity, do not worship the beast, neither his image, and neither receive his mark. Now the beast with the image, as we learned last night, is the papacy. And we remember in Revelation chapter 13, we found the beast with the image and we found also the second beast, which we found was Protestant America. And we remember it said that Protestant America does great wonders and he make it fire. That is the, the charismatic movement with all these signs and wonders that came about in the 1960s. He make it fire come down from heaven in, on the earth in the sight of men. And that fire, which people thought was the Holy Spirit, was actually a deceiving fire and deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. And we looked at the tongues, the babbling, and we found that it was not the biblical tongues as was given in Acts chapter 2. And so by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, in the sight of the papacy, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword. And we saw the wound by the sword was when the papal power received its deadly blow in 1798. And then we, by going through logically what the Bible was saying, we saw that the Protestant United States would cause all the earth to worship the first beast, that is to give their submission to the authority of the papacy. And we learned that the leader of the second beast, George W. Bush, is already of the opinion that the leader of the first beast, which is Benedict XVI, he called him the Holy Father and even said that he saw God in Pope Benedict's eyes. And we saw that the fire of that second beast, which was the charismatic movement, created a unity in fellowship and that first movement we saw was at first viewed with suspicion by the papacy but because the Catholics that participated testified that they received a greater appreciation for the Roman Catholic sacraments and the Mass and worship of Mary and so it was supported and from the EWTN website we found this statement which says an authentic charism that is one of these uh, experience of the babblings, which are called tongues and the emotional experiences, it says, if it's authentic, it would not pull one away from the Catholic Church. So even though they had the common worship experience, they still did not come away from idolatry and the other um, abominations that the papacy taught. It says, if a Catholic leaves seeking an emotional boost, he no longer finds in the church, he is seeking the gifts of the giver and not the giver of the gifts. Participation in the life of the church should lead any Catholic, charismatic, traditional, or ordinary into a deeper relationship with the Eucharist, the Mother, and the Pope. So we see, according to that um, description, the charismatic movement did not do anything in terms of moving the papacy out of its idolatry, but it, instead it created a unity of the Protestants, Protestants back to the papacy. So as a result of this fire, we saw Catholics became more devoted to the worship of Mary, while Protestants became more accepting of Catholics, but none gave up the papal Sabbath 
for God's Sabbath. Also, we, we see there in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 37 to 39, the Bible says, in the time of Elijah on Mount Carmel, they had this great standoff between the prophets of Baal and Elijah, God's prophet. And Elijah, desiring to show himself as the prophet of the true God, set up this altar and he asked God to send down fire from heaven to burn up the sacrifice. And we read Elijah's prayer here. He says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, etc., etc. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So fire from heaven is also a symbol of God's approval of your worship. And so the fire that came in the 1960s and the 1970s, people looking on came to the conclusion that this was indeed God's approval on the Protestant and the papal religions. But as the Bible told us in Revelation 13, the fire that came down from heaven in the sight of men deceives them that dwell on the earth. So it was a deceiving fire. And so now the battlefield is set. The earth beast can cause all the world to worship the first beast, saying that they should make an image to the first beast. Now what is the image to the beast? Now when we think about image in the Bible, our mind should go back to Genesis, where God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So an image is something that looks like the original. Its characteristics are that of another. And so the image to the beast is a religion that would be papal in nature because it's the image of the papacy. And so Protestant America is now going to advocate a papal type of religion. Remember, we want to know which one of these beasts the image will be made of. The Bible says, and cause it the earth, and them which dwell thereon to worship the first beast, which is the papacy, and saying that they should make an image to the beast which had the womb. So the, we know that the image is going to be of the papal religion. And so we know that things are going on behind the scenes in the hierarchy of these churches. The end result, as we see here, is that all will come under the authority of the first beast, the papacy. That's the objective. But the means of doing so is to first make an image to the papacy. What this means is that the Protestants must inculcate papal concepts, papal teachings and doctrines into the Protestant churches. And we saw last night that behind the scenes, this indeed is happening. We saw in the Times Online, in a 42-page statement prepared by International Commission of both churches, Anglican and Roman Catholics are urged to explore how they might reunite under the Pope. The statement was leaked to the Times, but as I said last night, it was leaked to us in the most sure word of prophecy 2,000 years ago. So slowly but surely, papal concepts are being brought in. Churches are becoming more and more papal. People are now saying, we don't see anything wrong with the Sunday Sabbath. They were saying that long time. We don't see anything wrong with the Sunday Sabbath. And now they're saying, we don't see anything wrong praying to Mary. And as we see here in the Time magazine, they carried an article called Hail Mary. And in this article, it says, a man stands at the lectern at the El Amor de Dios Church in Chicago, Southside, reading in Spanish. Tears streaming down his cheeks. His text is a treatment of the Virgin 